Alright, hey jerks. So this is a video that is probably a little premature because I don't have everything perfectly perfect, but I think it's to the point where I'm ready to do this. And this is the CX Racing, excuse me, this is the Miata 1.6 1993 uh, CX Racing kit, per turbo kit, with intercooler review and overview. And if you haven't watched the other videos, you don't necessarily have to if you're not... If, if, uh, if you're just kind of considering whether, whether you want to buy this or not, this is like the important video that you might want to watch uh, if you're even considering. The other videos you'll watch if you actually have decided to buy it and then it's sort of a step-by-step -step, uh, of, of things to do. So, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the pieces, the actual parts that you get. The CX Racing Turbo Kit is really, really compete, complete. And that is something that I appreciated very much because I'm not the type of person who is super smart about piecing together something and then figuring it all out and finding pieces that I don't have and then going out and figuring out what I need to, to make it work. The only things that I had to purchase that did not come with the kit was an exhaust manifold gasket. I also had to buy a cone filter, but that's no big deal. I had to buy a little bit of tubing right here and I'll explain that in just a second why. That's kind of it. Some hose clamps, some vacuum line tubing, but you know, it's just little stuff, little stuff that uh, I did. Oh, oh, here's something I did have to buy that was kind of a pain in the ass. These bolts right here that attach the downpipe to the turbo housing, those bolts I had to purchase. In general, I'm gonna give uh, CX Racing an A for including everything that you needed to make this turbo build work. Um, that does not include a AFR, uh, air fuel ratio gauge, uh, or, or an O2 sensor. It does not include a boost gauge, um, and it does not include an ECU, which would it's a good idea to use an ECU with this. A stock ECU will work, but I just decided to go with something that's a lot more adjustable and uh, tunable, so I went with the Megasquirt ECU. All right, so let's now talk about installation. Installation was, I'm gonna say difficult, but it wasn't as difficult as a timing belt change. There are no instructions. There's no installation instructions whatsoever in the kit. Uh, it would be really cool if they had them. That's why YouTube is around. That's why I guess I'm here to maybe walk you through what you need to do. The hard parts were these bolts that hold on the uh, turbo to the manifold. They're not really long enough. As you can see that the, these, these nuts are barely uh, screwed on to the point where the the studs of the of the bolts aren't coming through. There's a bolt right under here, uh, a fourth bolt that kind of touches the 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 manifold here, and it's nearly impossible to get that bolt in. We had to use a hammer, kind of like to hammer it in. The turbo does not come clocked, and when I say clocked, it's it's the position of this turbo. So when you buy this, when it when it when it's delivered to you the output is coming this way. So you have to loosen up these things with a snap ring pliers and turn this. And when you do that, the included hose that goes from, it's the boost line hose from here to here that works the wastegate, um, it, it's too short by the time you, you rotate that down. So you have to buy a longer hose uh, for your wastegate. And it's just fuel line hose. The intercooling piping. Holy crap, is that a uh, pain in the ass? Uh, because you are you have all these pieces and you have no idea how they go. But there's a couple of decent videos, mine included, that kind of teach you how and where pieces go. Um, mounting the intercooler was not a, a joy because it was very difficult to decide where it connects to the car. And we just sort of, I just sort of made it work. Uh, I'm not so sure this is right or wrong but uh, it's, it's in there real good and it's, it's not going anywhere. So that's fine. The oil drain line, it was just a little difficult to, to get on there. And there were some things that I wish I would have kind of put on the turbo before I installed it. But all in all, it kind of went together just fine. Uh, there is one problem 
with the exhaust. It's, it's built as a direct bolt-on, meaning you should be able to mate your downpipe with the little flex pipe piece, and then that should go right into your factory cat and your factory exhaust, and you should be good to go. Not true on this 1993. Apparently on uh, 1.6 cats, the exhaust manifold has a slightly smaller bolt width than after the cat. It's really strange. I, I thought it was really strange that the, the bolts are narrower on the exhaust manifold side than they are on the cat back side. The flex pipey thing that comes off of the downpipe, it would not fit on my existing cat. So there was some custom exhaust work that I had to do to get an actual exhaust on this car. And if you have a 1.6 kit, you may have to do the same thing as I did. The other issue was tuning. Now, tuning was a challenge for me because I had never done anything like it. And working with the Mega Squirt was a lot easier than I would say working with the ECU because, or the stock ECU, because I could actually get into the program and see what was going on. And um, the more you use it, the more familiar you become with it. And I'm going to go over that in just a little bit of what you will need to do for, for tuning on a Mega Squirt. But uh, we're basically more talking about the CX Racing kit right now. This oil supply line was a little bit of a pain in the butt because of the way the way the CX Racing kit supplies the pieces that you need. It's a weird four-way, I guess, splitter for... Oh, shit. All right, well, I really hope that was recording, but I fucked up. So if you can see in there, can I see? Yeah, I guess that's sort of in there. Um, so that's the oil pressure send feed, whatever. And there's a weird four-way thing that you have to kind of put together. And uh, you need a, uh, what was a 30 millimeter, whoops, that's not gonna be focused, a 30 millimeter deep socket to get that uh, oil send out of there. Um, what's convenient, what's really convenient, and something I did not use, because you'd have to get extra stuff, is there's a bolt down in there. Um, I don't think, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Um, I'll try to uh, circle it on this video. There's a bolt down there, which is also an oil feed line, but you need an AN fitting right there that, that, that converts into, I don't know, some other metric thing that that fits into the oil feed line thing that's supplied. Or you can buy your own oil, your feed line, and then get your own custom pieces put onto it, as long as it fits onto the oil supply on the actual turbo right here. On a scale of one to 10, how difficult was the install? I'm gonna say like a six or a seven. Certainly if I had to do this again, I could probably do it in a day only because now that I'm familiar with the kit and I've done it once, I've made all the mistakes, I've made all the goofs, I now have all the tools that I, I might have had to buy in order to, to do this install, um, I'm pretty sure I could do the whole thing in a day with a friend because it does, a lot of these things do require kind of like a two-man, uh, two-player game type stuff. It's just uh, some of the pieces are very difficult to get into place, so you need one set of hands on them while another set is uh, kind of putting the bolts where they need to be. Everything does fit together. It's just really, really tight in some places. I am still using my AFM. Um, you can put in an air temperature sensor, thanks to Greg at the Passion, uh, Car Passion Channel. You can drill, you can tap right into here with an, uh, an air temperature sensor and then run the wires to this thing, there's two pins that you would run wires to, and then this whole thing can go away and you can just run a uh, filter right into the intake. So a six or a seven um, on the installation, although there are no instructions whatsoever, so I'm gonna bump that up to an eight because there's so much head scratching and standing around the car with your hands on your hips going, what the hell, how does this work? It took us basically three um, days and they weren't full days, obviously, but it took us basically three days to do this, the, the majority of the installation. And um, I don't know if it helps to have friends around or if it screws you up and takes longer uh, because it, it always seems like my friends, uh, there's a lot of goofing going on when, when my friends come over, but I like it because it's, it makes the job fun instead of a giant pain in the ass. All right, so we're gonna talk about little problems that I ran into 
that you may or may not run into. The first one was we were running super rich for the longest time and for whatever reason we couldn't figure out why and it had to do with where the vacuum was going back. You know what? I'm talking out of my ass. I don't even know because if you watch that other video we had a eureka moment where I think Neil just came in here and swapped some of these lines that get teed off on different areas here and somehow once that was done the AFRs were back in normal ranges and it was okay so <laughs> I don't I don't even know what happened the other thing that happened when we first started it up and again this is in another video that you can watch is that it was just pouring out uh, oily smoke um, I don't know if it was super super rich and I was seeing like the gas fumes I don't think so but it was like oil coming out and I, that was scary to me because even though this motor has 171,000 miles on it it was strong and it was not spewing out any smoke it was no not leaking anywhere so it was scary to me that all of a sudden now it was just billowing out oil smoke um, but that seemed to go away it seemed to fix itself I don't know maybe it was just the uh, metal components kind of burning off their shipping oils and kind of getting uh, burned in. Fact of the matter is it doesn't put out any smoke now, which is nice. The other problem is I just kind of fixed this in another video and uh, that is the wastegate situation and how you need to adjust it for the maximum boost that you're gonna push. This this rod right here is on a is on a threaded, threaded line and what you need to do is remove that spring washer right there. I don't know what they're called, sea washer. Um, you pop that off. This comes off of the post and you spin this to make it longer, which will keep the wastegate open slightly. You can kind of hear it in there. That'll keep the wastegate open slightly and then you won't push past a certain amount of boost uh, depending on what you want because that is a 14 PSI wastegate and um, Obviously, you're not going to blow 14 pounds right away. You want to kind of break your, your turbo system in to make sure everything's going to work properly. And then my ECU is going to cut off at a certain PSI. So I never was getting to the 14 pounds that the wastegate would open with. So now that I, now that I have this set up, it's, uh, it's much better. It seems to behave a lot better. These hose clamps that CX Racing includes are really, really good. They're nice. Um, they're not these cheapo ones. <laughs> the only problem was we didn't tighten every single one of them. And uh, so I would take it out, we'd hit boost, something would pop off and then there's no boost. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, so we'd have to bring it back in here and check everything because this kept popping off and then uh, it became my own little <laughs> variable wastegate. So I could still get up into the um, six, eight pounds, but that's as far as I could go because all my, <laughs> all my exhaust was flying out of there uh, but now everything's great tapping into the uh, oil pan down there now when I was doing this I, I believe I got a comment that somebody said that oh no you have to you have to uh, put that all the way in I don't know if you can see the all those whoops out of control all those threads that are sticking out of there and um, there's probably six or eight threads into the oil pan and uh, you might also not be able to see a single drop of oil coming out of there. Let me go even closer, give you a better look. Look at that. So I didn't put any, um, I didn't put any thread lock on it. I didn't put any goo on it. It's not JB welded, but it's perfectly solid and not dripping at all. It's all good. For installation, I'm gonna give them a C. Um, because although everything kind of fit together, there were some very minor hiccups that you had to jump through and with no instructions whatsoever, it's not, it's, it's not for the, the person who needs this, who needs their car to be up and running within two days. Um, this is not that job. You, you got to make sure that you have a good solid week that you can work out all your bugs and, and deal with any kind of problems and, and, be able to run to your local Ace Hardware and get whatever bolts or, or tools that you might need because you're going to need something. You, you just will. Not everybody has everything that you need. Like I needed snap ring pliers. I needed um, a drill bit that could, that could do the oil pan. I needed a tap and die set. So I didn't spend that much on tools. 
um, you're probably going to need exhaust. So it's like you, you can't just knock this out in a weekend hoping that everything's going to be great. For fine tuning and, and, and operation, uh, I, I'm going to have to give it a B, B plus because this thing rips and uh, I can feel, I can feel an excellent pull. Uh, I still have to kind of fine tune the wastegate. Um, the wastegate is open a little too much now because I cannot pull past 10 pounds of, or eight, nine pounds of boost, which is safe, but I would like to get up into the 12 and that means changing my ECU cutoff but uh, that's, that's gonna be later. Um, but when I was feeling it, oh man, it feels so good. Unfortunately, I've only had it in for about a week. I'm absolutely certain there's going to be a future video for longevity of this thing, how the manifold's holding up, um, more tuning, and seeing how far I can push the boost. One last thing I wanna take you uh, inside and show you the software and how it works with tuning. This is less about CX Racing and a little bit about, about Mega Squirt, but I wanted to include it just the same. I think without Mega Squirt, this wouldn't be as easy and as good as it is. So let me take you inside and show you that. All right, so I don't have any fancy screen capture software, so I'm just gonna have to kind of do this um, the old fashioned way. So the camera's shooting into the, uh, into the screen. So here is the Tuner Studio program that comes with Mega Squirt. Obviously I'm not connected, but I just put this in there just for fun to show you kind of how things work. So you go, you go in here and there's two things you're looking at. You're looking at your AFR table and this is like what you want it to be. Now when you open this up, it's generally only from 30 to 100. And that's because that's what a normally aspirated car, that's the only thing that a normally aspirated car could do. When you're doing a turbo, build or even a uh, supercharged you're going to have boost which is above 100 percent and this is uh um so you have to rescale these and you just go in there by by going in there and, and changing these values uh it's really that simple anyway so what you're doing here is you're sort of telling it what you'd like the ecu to to do um and obviously when you're cruising you can be a little more lean when you're up in the boost you should be a little more rich um, and that is to avoid any kind of um, detonation when you don't want it and blah, blah, blah. You can avoid throwing rods that way. So those are the ta that's the table of what you would like it to be. Um, and that's really just telling the, the computer what the target is. And then you also come into, um, oops, sorry. You come in to look at your, uh, your VE table. And this is more about your fuel load, how much fuel it's dumping um, while, you're, while you're running. So these are the, the values that the computer is going to be looking at while you're, while you're uh, running. Um, and then it will make adjustments based on what your AFR requests are to create the right mixture of fuel and air. Um, so the way we read this, I guess, I don't know how you read this. This is fuel load. So hundred percent, um, into the upper boost here, you're going to dump more fuel, um, when you're cruising and idling, you're, you're putting less fuel. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how all this works exactly. The computer basically does all this for you and it will try and give you those optimum numbers to, uh, meet your AFR goals. Now. How does that work? Well, you come in here and you do data logging. And what you would do is you would start a data log. And then you drive around a little while. You drive kind of how you want to. Um, oh, one thing I should say before that is the, the boost. And you can go into boost control. And here is where your boost control... Um, uh, oh, I should have had that on both, but whatever. Um, here's where your overprotection is. And... Um, so I have set mine set to 170 kilopascal, which I believe is right around nine PSI. You could do the math, but uh, I didn't. Okay, let's go back to data logging. So you start data logging and then uh, it, it, it will ask you, you know, what is what do you want to do? It, it puts the date and the time if you want it to. So yes, you say, okay, great. We're going to start data logging. This data log, where is it? This data logging thing will turn green um, that you're now recording information. So you do your little drive and you're done, and then you're going to stop the data log. You can either do it through data log, it'll be stop or control B, that's what I use. 
Um, and then you're going to come into your data analysis program. This is the, the Megalog viewer. And you're going to open the last file that it created or whatever you called it. You know, it doesn't really matter. And we'll just look at the last one that I did. And what happens is when it, when it opens, um, you're going to get the, all these graphs, and you can change what the graphs mean, uh, RPM, um, all this crap. Uh, but none of it really matters unless you're super getting into self-tuning. Uh, the important part over here is this VE Analyze. So this is your existing VE table. Um, this is the table that you were running when you were doing the data log. When you go into VE Analyze, this will bring up basically the same thing. And when you hit run analysis, it will take the data that it just uh, evaluated and based on all, whoops, based on all this information that it was collecting and stuff like that, it will then make uh, suggestions or changes to this table and probably change a lot of these numbers based on how you were driving and optimum what your, what your AFR target was. And it will suggest changes to it. And that's what I did several times and it seemed to really, really change the dynamics of the car. It made things run smoother, and I didn't have any weird backfires and pops and stuff like that. Now, certainly you can set it up to do that, and that's a different video and probably not one I'm going to make because I don't think I'll be running stuff like that. There you have it. Now, it's critically important that you have a wideband a AFR, but that's kind of you, that was kind of a, a uh, entry fee to get into this anyway. All right, so once that's done, you would save your tune, and then you go back to your uh, back to your tuner studio, and then you drive around some more after you have loaded the new, um, and you come in here and you load tune, um, and see I have these different tunes that I've been collecting. So I I did the I did this loop five times to get different. Uh, different uh, VE tables. And uh, so that's where we're at. So you just basically load in whatever, and that's that. So that is a really, really dumbed down, simplified version of how to use these two programs to get your, your tune correct. Now, obviously the first thing you had to have done was put in a bass tune but uh, that's just something you can find online. A lot of these things are grayed out because this is the free version of Tuner Studio. And if you pay, what is it, like 60 bucks, I'm sure you get all those uh, extra things happening right there. I'm gonna give this a B plus as well because although it was really intimidating at first, like I was scared out of my mind to start messing with that stuff, um, after I messed with it a little bit and sort of understood, watched a couple videos of, of how things work, um, thank you again, Greg, at the Car Passion Channel. Um, you made it so that I wasn't too scared to do these things on my own. The program is, is pretty easy to learn pretty quickly, and you do all this stuff in real time. If Also, here's an, another interesting thing if you pay for the $60 um, program, is that this right here, this uh, says... Tune Analysis Live. Uh, that does everything that I just showed you about data collecting and going into the analysis program, running VE analysis, and then saving that, sending it back to the ECU. It does all that live. For some of you, that might be worth the 60 bucks immediately. So again, I'm sorry this video went long, but uh, I did have a lot to say about the CX Racing Kit. Cost for the money, and uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, this was $960. That's for the entire kit, intercooler included. Had to spend a little bit of money on just a few little tiny things and then some tools. Mega Squirt was $900. The AFR, which you absolutely need, was $140, I think. That's, that's with the wideband O2 sensor. So all in all, I think I'm just under $2,000 if you don't include the, the tools. Um, but we'll call it two grand. I have what I feel is a easily tuned, somewhat reliable, way more go, and uh, it's fun to drive. It's fun to feel that pushback in your seat. That's it, that is my review of the CX Racing 
turbo plus intercooler kit for the 1.6 Miata. For the kit itself, everything included, A. For installation, C. For, uh, for tuning and, and, and um, operation, I'm giving it a, a B plus. And then for the software with the Mega Squirt, uh, I'm giving it also a B plus. So I think all in all, in all, we're gonna call this uh, a, a B plus kit. Uh, and again, that's only if you're working with a mega squirt like I did. CX Racing gives a big thumbs up from Good Egg Pro, and the cum stain is mostly happy with it. And so there you go. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them for you. If you need any help, um, just send me a, a, a comment on on a YouTube video. You know what? I plan on having a Snapchat soon. I plan on on probably making a, a unique. Instagram. I already have an Instagram, but it's I don't really use it because it's uh, it's more for my photography. Um, but I'll, I'll probably make one more Miata specific. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. <clears throat> if you didn't like it, sorry. Uh, and uh, maybe be sure to subscribe. And that's it. So um, until next time, bye.